Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha aka Geek XX Chic, and I'm back with another review to Black Lightning. This is episode 10, which was called The Sins of the Father, The Book of Redemption. And whoo! Man, did they ever go with that Sins of the Father theme in this episode? They definitely carried it through. Uh, and I, I, as I guessed, it was with both Jefferson and with Gamby being a father figure. And um, wow, this was this was my favorite episode to date. I said it. I loved it. I loved everything about it. I loved the action sequences, like the ones between Jefferson and Anissa. I loved seeing uh, the, the the comedy was on point this entire episode. I laughed out loud so many times. The messages that came through, uh, just oh, all of it was so good. The stuff with Gamby, like it was so good. This was such a good episode. Like I said, my favorite. Like, they keep this up, and they are definitely, like, I mean, they're already been renewed, but if they can keep it up, if they can do season, like episodes like this for the rest of this season and well into next, I'm telling you, this is going to start beating out all the shows on the C-Dubs, because it's amazing. Let's get into some of the highlights of the episode for me. Um, Lala. Let's talk about him right off the bat here. Uh, I'm starting to think that this resurrection that uh, he went through, uh, that he, it's, it's changed him. Um, like it's taken something away from him. And, uh, you know, if we're going with the whole idea of resurrection lore, um, I'm not, so, so please, if I'm wrong about this, people don't raise me too much because I don't watch, I haven't watched Arrow since season two, but I know with the whole, um, they have that well that could res resurrect people. I'm sorry, the name completely escaped me. But the whole idea is what when people were resurrected that way, you know, remember when that happened to, um, to Laurel's sister, she came back and she was like crazy and like not herself. But the whole idea is that like if someone dies and they come back, there's the idea out there that you're not quite the same anymore, that some of you is either changed forever or lost forever. And I feel like the show is definitely going with the idea of that here because Lala seems to have lost kind of all of his empathy. Like, I don't think he had a ton to begin with, let's be real. If you're gonna shoot your cousin in the back of the head, you're clearly not that empathetic of a person, but it's like whatever was left of that is gone, although it seems to be kind of manifesting itself a little bit through uh, Lawanda and through his uh, through his cousin. But this Lala is somebody that Tobias needs to watch out for because this Lala is not scared, he's not soft, he's not looking for forget, and he's clearly, he's, like he thinks he's invincible and it might be true. Like the fact that he just walked up into that brother with a gun and was like, pull the trigger bro, do what you gotta do. And the gun misfired, which I mean, again, like folks, those of you out there who might know, I know that you, there's been some speculation on who his character is in the comic, but um, it looks like he's not killable. Is that possible? Or he's not, at least not killable with bullets? Or does he just keep coming back? Like, I'm not sure what happened with that gun, but I'm really, like, it's a little scary to think that Lala can't be killed. I mean, it can't be true. There's gotta be a way to actually do it, but I mean, maybe maybe he's bulletproof. I don't know, but theories, please let me know, because I was like, that's insane. But anyway, um, very interesting to see Lala go through this whole thing. I feel like, like I said, those two manifestations are his conscience, potentially, and maybe only the people that he feels bad about killing appear on his chest. I'm not sure. I don't know if everyone's gonna show up there, because so far, we only know of those two, but I feel like Lala has killed more people. We'll see. We'll see if the guy with the with the missing ear is going to show up again. But damn! Damn! That thing with the ear, though! Like, this show is next... I mean, Arrow is pretty bad with showing some stuff as far as violence, but, like, Black Lightning is taking it to a whole new level. That brother ripped his ear. Just Mike Tyson that ear right off, y'all. Just and kept it. And then put two in the man's chest. Like, Lala's not playing, y'all. This is... This man is ruthless, but I think that once Tobias finds out that Lala's back and talking smack about him, I look forward to seeing the uh, the battle between the two resurrected. But also, sorry, side note, that just made me remember that as far as him being super, super evil now, the man put up his mama for collateral. His mama! Like... As soon as that happened, I'm like, okay, bye, Lala. Someone needs to kill him. I do not want Lala to get into season two for that reason alone. You put up your mama as collateral for your drug running like you? I mean, a lot of dealers out there are willing to sink to a lot of lows, but usually but their mamas at the very least are sacred. That woman didn't do anything but birth your big-headed behind and give you food and shelter for you to stand up and put her up? Oh, 
Lord. I hope Jen just sets that ass on fire and roasts it. Slow roast that. That was it for me. Like that was, I was like, Lala is canceled after that. But anyway, it was cool to see Jeff uh, the other side of Jefferson's personality again in this episode. I mean, in the first episode of the series, we got to see a lot of his whole, you know, trying to save people thing, you know, being the principal, the mantra he gave to the kids. And that was really good to see because obviously, you know, with the situation as it is in America, black kids and particularly young black men need strong, smart, capable role models to show them a different way to be. And seeing that little, you know, story with uh, the young kid whose name eludes me right now, how Jefferson was like, you know, he could have easily been like, you know, you were the little punk that threatened my daughter. You know, I could just be like, let him go off and get hurt. But Jefferson was like, no, you know, I realize this kid is probably not doing this because he's a terrible kid. And we heard that, that, you know, that harsh reality that he said about, you know, I got my grandma is taking care of me. We don't have enough money. I do this so that we have money. And Jefferson's like, well, let me help you. Let me, you know, reach out, help you, show you that there's other ways to do this and find a way to help you guys. Because that's what needs to happen. Right? The reality is a lot of these kids out there doing this stuff is not doing it because they're just bad. It's because they really don't see another way to survive. And so they need more people, adults, to kind of step in and give them that that help or at least offer that assistance to them if they're, if, if they're so inclined to take it. And oh my God, that crazy funny part with him and 2-Bit. <laughs> Tell him 2-Bit he ain't allowed to smoke no weed. He need to do better. Maybe get 2 bit some chapstick because his lips were quite white. You know, I just like seeing that side of Jeff. He really is a compassionate person. He really does care about people. Being black, being black lightning is not just about, oh, I get to do superhero stuff and throw lightning. It really is about him, you know, caring about people and not being okay with sitting back and letting them, you know, be fodder for the wolves when he can do something. So, and then conversely, seeing him when he's with Jen, oh my God, that scene in the beginning with him and Jen doing that, like the formations and stuff, like they got their form together so they're doing moves like, girl, you think that's bad now? Just wait till Jen gets it. Like Jen's gotta join. Jen's gotta join the crew. It's gonna happen. It's gotta happen. Will it happen this season? Not sure. We only have a few episodes left, but I feel like we're gonna, Jen's gonna get pushed to use those powers um, uh, assertively very soon and that she's gonna like it more than she thinks. Um, Wow, but yeah, that stuff was really cool in the beginning. I love seeing lightning and thunder play off, you know, um, play off of each other in that moment. But really, we need Anissa to just dial it back. Like, this is why we need Gamby. <laughs> because for all of Gamby's faults, Gamby at least is smart enough to, uh, like, he understands the beast that they're trying to slay, right? Gamby's been in the belly of this beast. He knows how it works. I mean, I feel like after this episode, that initial anger is now over. Jefferson's done pouting and being mad at Gamby. Now that that's out of the way, at least Jefferson can be done with the anger and realize he does need Gamby and not just for his suit and not just for, you know, logistics, but because Gamby has actually worked with these people before. You know, if Gamby had been involved in the beginning, Jen, or uh, sorry, Anissa wouldn't have walked into that warehouse. She would have known that there would be things like cameras and other things that would have recorded her wandering through the place, right? And so it's just, you know, they could have, you know, maybe organized, like Gamby would have been the person to be like, let's organize a formal, you know, <laughs> retrieval where we actually go in and see what's going on. But at least Anissa was smart enough to know not to just smash open those cryogenic chambers because God knows what could have done to them if she'd done that. Uh, while we're talking about, you know, the Jefferson family, just jumping right into Jennifer and a little bit more of seeing her powers kind of full on, we discover from the MRI that Jen is a, huh, wait for it, wait for it, a generator. Thank you, thank you. I'm here till Thursday. It was cheesy, I know, I had to do it. But uh, very cool to see a little bit more about how Jen's powers work, that the energy that she produces is coming from inside of her. Um, whereas, like she said, with um, with Jefferson, he draws electricity in around him. He, take, he can take it from any source and then channel it. Whereas she is actually the conduit, like she actually generates that energy and pushes it out um, and is able to use that. So I thought that that was really, really cool to find out. And that it's energy. I wasn't sure if it was fire or what it was, but apparently it's energy, a little bit different. So we've got Anissa who can modify her structure and her body to make it, you know, thicker, denser, stronger. And then we've got Jefferson who can actually absorb 
uh, electric energy and channel it. And now we've got Jen, who is a generator. I can't help it. It's, it's just, it's just, it's too natural. You have to do it. And she can actually push power out. So that's pretty cool. Um, that is a really lethal combination to get going. I'm just waiting for like the thunder energy earthquake to happen in the season finale like that stuff's gotta happen it's gonna be amazing I love that you know the little fight between her and Anissa I mean Anissa was being a little bit mean but it was very true that she had to push through to Jen that you know you can't just quit on this like I mean in fairness Jen is 16 she is still a teenager this is an age where a lot of kids are very much like I don't want to do anything that's hard or adulty and when you're a teenager that's one of the few times you have left to be able to get away with that but you know, I love that, you know, Anissa brought out, girl, you can't walk away from this. I know this is hard. I know this is stressful, but you can't just walk. These are your powers and you do need to learn how to use them at the very least, or at least what triggers them. Otherwise you will hurt someone like her power is pretty intense. And we saw that with her just getting a little upset, you know, she turned into a small little, a little small fire tornado right there. Right. So imagine if she was really upset. Right. So really cool to see that. And I loved her little question to him about like, how do you go to the bathroom in that suit? That's a question everybody wants to know. Right. We see these superheroes and it's like, but how do you pee? And then I guess that kind of brings us to the last little revelation that we got. And that was that, first of all, that uh, Jefferson still owns his, his, dad, his, his home. That was kind of a random thing. I never expected that he would have kept the, the house that he grew up in, but turned out to be conveniently there for this particular reason. But uh, more importantly, uh, we found out about the vice principal. And uh, I kind of said um, in my reaction video, I always thought there was something a little off of that vice principal. I didn't really mention it so much in my videos, but I just remember thinking that she got so much like lines and screen time in this show that it didn't make sense unless it was going to turn into something. Um, you know, I mean, in the first episode of the this, of this season, I thought, okay, well maybe, you know, Jefferson and this girl have something going on. Maybe they're dating or maybe they were dating or they're going to date. But then when we, you know, by episode two or three, it was pretty clear that Jefferson was completely 100% still into Lynn, wasn't into this vice principal at all. So I was like, okay, great. Well, then she's just going to kind of fade into the background. But we just kept getting these moments where they just kept interacting and she keeps, you know, she still kept being thirsty and stuff. And I was like, what is, there's got to be something up with this girl. There's something off about her that we keep seeing her, but I'm not sure what it is. And I, part of me started thinking, well, maybe she's working with these ASA folks. Maybe she's with somebody that, you know, she's a, she's a double agent of some kind. And I was right. I did not think that she was the spotter, which we learned a new term this episode, that that's what Gamba used to do was a spotter for these people who develop abilities. But that's what she is. She was a spotter right there in the school looking for candidates to give this green light to. Her face when she found out that she's been hitting on Black Lightning all this time was glass. Oh my God, that was classic. <laughs> interesting that she thinks she can take Jefferson down. I'm wondering how she thinks she's going to do it, however, because Jefferson does not like her like that. Like, she's not going to be able to snuggle her way up to him if that's what she's thinking. But the reality is Jeff is not even remotely thinking of her as a potential spy. So she would, she could potentially get close enough to Jefferson to hurt him. But we saw her face when she turned away from, um, from her boss there. She clearly has a thing for Jeff. We all know that. And maybe it's more than just a crush. I mean, she's been working with him for two years, I think he said. So I think she's genuinely developed a, like a respect and, a, and a, some form of affection for him. So I don't think it's going to be as easy for her to just go ahead and kill this guy. So we might have someone who might end up turning, you know, worked for the bad guys. But now that she's got to do something hard, she might work for the good guys. We'll have to see. Uh, I would, I'm not saying that it's going to happen, but I would not mind potentially seeing her and Lynn just kind of bust some heads. Um, or maybe just see Jen, see this woman try to take out her daddy and just set the girl on fire. I wouldn't be against that either. Just watch that weave go on up. Time will tell. We'll have to see, but it definitely adds yet another layer of complexity to the plot. Like, I don't even know what we're going to handle in this season finale, guys. Because I mean, if we count it all down now, we got, we got Tobias thinking that Jefferson killed his sister, or Black Lightning killed his sister. We got Lala, who's going after Tobias and or Black Lightning because he's got beef. We've got... The ASA still hunting him down now with the secret agent. That's the third one in there. And then we still just have all the other nonsense that's going on with the green light and all the gangs. Like, there's just so much going on right now. And I don't know what's going to go off and what's going to pop off first, but I am ready and here for it. But all in all, guys, A-plus episode. Loved it. It was so good. I enjoyed it thoroughly. I barely took notes because I was so glued to the screen to see what was going to happen next and hear that great dialogue. 
and uh, it was good. Definitely my favorite of the season so far. What did you guys think of this episode? How are you feeling about all these this things that are going on with this plot? Do you agree with me that you feel like this is going to be someone's going to end up going out at the end of the season? And who do you think that's going to be as far as the villain? And also, how do you feel about Jen's powers? Can you give me a little bit more background on what the way it works? Is it matching up with the with the comics? And uh, is it better? Is it worse? Do we like the effects that we got? Because I thought that was pretty cool as well. Please leave your comments below. I'd love to read them and get involved in that conversation with you. And if you like this video, guys, please click like. And if you want to see more from this geeky face, please click subscribe. And if those of you who are wondering where the reaction is, it is on Patreon. I did a whole long video about why I have to move these particular reactions to Patreon rather than regular YouTube. So please, if you're interested in that, check out my Patreon page. The link will be below and you can check that out and potentially see it there. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Until next time, see ya.